Um, the the first question we were I was going to ask was related to the the balance uh, of unschooling, and maybe if you could speak a little bit. And this is a a tough one, but how should we balance like trying new maybe harder tasks for kids versus uh, that like kind of growing in their like say that the, it are already the interest that they have that perhaps they perceive as much easier. So like, I wonder if sometimes like in the unschooling space, it's like, okay, we want to, obviously we want to address their interests, but what happens if like their interests are mostly in things that they're familiar with and they're, they're doing things because they're scared. I don't know of what's new. What do you think? Yeah. So I feel like, you know, we always need to be in conversation and in relationship with our children so that we are helping them and supporting them the best way that we can. But I really think that we also need to um, resist the desire to um, sort of project our own values or our own goals for our kids onto them because they are, like we said, they are their own people. They move at a different pace. They may have different ambitions than we do. So even though we might want them to really improve their skills in a certain area, if that isn't intrinsically motivated, then that's really just us placing that expectation on them, right? So um, if they just want to play soccer and have fun with their with their kids, and we are trying to get them to be the championship or to be captain of the team and helping them to uh, like gain better skills and send them to soccer camp, even though they don't aren't interested. Um, I think that's something that we really need to evaluate as parents. Like, is this really about my child or is it about me and my ego and wanting my kid to perform in a certain way? So I think like back, it has to go to consent. It has to go to self, like that self-motivation so that we honor them because not, not all kids are going to want to be super achievers. So so when when we want to like balance, you know, like pushing them, like why is that? What is the thing that is driving us to push our kids? So there's that piece. And I think there's also like kids who are motivated, um, I believe are naturally um, interested in improving their skills. Like if you see kids who are really into video gaming or whatever, you don't have to motivate them to get them to try to get better at this video game, right? They are naturally motivated because that's something from within them. So part of it is like if we uh, give them the time and the support to pursue the things that they really love, kids will naturally seek to gain more skills. We don't necessarily have to push them because they're interested in it. They're passionate about it. And if they don't, um, I feel like that's okay too, because why can't it just be play? Why, Why do they have to be like number one and the best in everything? Part of it is just, why can't they just do it for enjoyment, right? There yeah, is I, the, I loved uh, your um your recent blog post that talked about this where you said every time like your kid gets into something you're thinking like oh my gosh they're into soccer they're gonna be like the next like like t- world class soccer player or they they get into art oh my gosh they're gonna be like the next artist like uh like maybe not wait like we don't need them to to be like that they could have interest and they they can move between them um I think the the challenge is so many parents think of like yeah, that's great. But like, and, and I do want to encourage their interests. But then at the same time, like they're going to a school and like they're going to be evaluated on like how well they do in these things. And it's going to determine whether or not they're going to be able to like as a parent, I'm like freaking out. And so it's like, I even wonder, it's like they're for, for my son, for example, it could be something as simple as trying new foods, right? He's hesitant. He's like really picky in terms of his eating. And uh, sometimes like the other day we were doing Taekwondo and he loves Taekwondo, but there was this one board he was trying to break and then he was hesitant to, to break it because, because what? Well, because he was scared that he would fail, right? Like he didn't want to do it. And so sometimes when we, we sat down and we, we go, well, you're not doing this because you're scared, right? Like you're, you're doing this because you're, you're, you're trying to avoid these things. You're trying to do all these other things that you want, like you want to do but they're not really interesting to you. Like you're doing them, like you're building these Legos, but you're building the same one that you built last time, or you're, you're cutting these like little pieces of art, but this is the same ones that you did last time. 
you're not doing that necessarily now because you're interested in it, but you're you're more doing it because it's it's very comfortable for you. And so now I'm trying to get you out of comfort zone and trying to move you into a, a more challenging, like a harder, you know, uh, level. Uh, what can we do? <laughs> what would you suggest? Yeah, I think again that's something that you know I would discuss with a child and see like is that their motivation to get to the next level, right? Like, are they motivated to improve in this area? Are they motivated enough to overcome some of their fears, to overcome some of the challenges? Because there are a lot of things that are difficult and challenging for us, but we, as even as adults, will not pursue because we're just not interested in it, right? Like, I'm not going to be like... um, you know, be into lifting weights, even though it's hard and challenging, just because like, that's not a priority for me. So I think like, what we are encouraging our kids to improve on, if it's self, you know, self motivated, and intrinsically part of them, then of course, we want to support them. So I think, you know, we just need to have conversations with our kids and not be coercive about it, not shame them because we have, you know, if our kid is more cautious and has more anxiety or is fearful, what we want to do is not push them, like throw them in the deep end and expect them to like, well, this is the way the world works. And so you need to go out there and and do it. Um, But what we need to do is encourage Right. So how do we encourage, give them more courage? I think part of that is patience. Part of that is like giving them choice so they don't feel forced into something before they are ready. I think there's a lot of times when more cautious people, more cautious children feel like they're not accepted for who they are. Their their boundaries aren't respected because an adult has these expectations of them to like push past their fears, do something before they're ready, all those things. And so I feel like with kids, we need to honor their process, their personality. Some kids are going to be slower. Some kids are going to be more timid. So how can we support them and encourage them, give them space, um, really say, I'm here for you if you want to try this. If you're not ready, that's okay. You know, and also talk about we how we can't let fear, you know, control us, how we want, if this is something you really want to do. Um, you know, there, there we're always going to be uh, facing challenges and things that are scary, things that are difficult. But um, reminding our kids that they are loved no matter how they perform, you know, so I think those are the messages that we need to be giving our kids, not like try harder, um, you know, go, go for this thing, even though you're scared. You know, I think it's really about meeting those basic needs first and helping them to feel safe, helping them to have that internal courage so that they feel supported as they take these steps. I, I love that so much um, because you're saying it, like it's something that is is so true. It, it's this notion of giving them choice also means giving having the patience so that they can make that choice. And sometimes we don't have the patience. We need them to perform now. And if they like need to perform now, then there was never a choice to to learn this. And that's something that it took me a long time to realize with my own son as well. We had to talk about what are those fears. We had to get to the conclusion. And then eventually he's the one who would come and say, OK, I'm ready now. Like, I'd like to do this. And and it took a long time. Like an, <laughs> It could take like an hour. It could take, you know, it could take a lo- many days. Who knows? But the key thing was he wasn't going to do it no matter how much forcing or or how much like that we required him to do it until he was ready to make that choice. And that, that patience for it. Oh, that is, that is a, a real skill as a parent, you know, building, you're building this, this high level of uh, patience. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And I just remember, you know, myself as a child and being made to do things that I didn't want to do, that I wasn't ready for. And I think what that does is it just creates um, disconnection with your parents, you know, where you feel like they're not really honoring you, they don't understand you. 
Um, they're not going to listen to your fears or your anxieties or how you're feeling. You just have to plow through. You have to ignore your own needs and desires. Um, and so, yeah, that work of patience, that work of giving our children autonomy, honoring that is like a lot of that is on us as parents to carry that that tension and that burden because it is hard. Absolutely. Um, I, I like it. I remember, so this, this pandemic, um, you know, that we've, we've been through has been like one of the most trying times of my entire life. Um, I, as a, like a parent with young kids, um, and I, I often wonder like, how do people get through this? Uh, in the same way though, like by the end of it, I remember speaking to uh, my son's doctor where he was just like bouncing off the walls and he was doing things and he's like, oh my gosh, do you need like, you know, more medication for him? And I was like, wow, we've, okay, we, we've done it. We've, we've built up some tolerance. <laughs> we've built up some of that, that patience. And it, it took a long time to, to realize, like you think like, oh man, at where I am right now versus like where I think I should be, like, oh, I'm so far behind as a parent. I feel like I, I could be doing a lot more in terms of patience because we always see situations where we could have done better. But it, it recognizing that we're all on this journey <laughs> of developing that patience and compared to some others like who see this externally, they're, they're blown away at how much patience we do have. So recognizing that we do have this skill and we can see it, we, we do see it in, um, improve uh, over time. Not that we're perfect, but it's like we're recognizing we're trying to build something. Our, our capacity for handling their, their choice, their emotional outbursts, their like whatever it could be. So I love this so much. 